You're breathing these chemicals in, you're drinking these chemicals, you're eating these chemicals on your food. So you like laundry and your dishwasher is, is, are two really important places for you to start, right? Because those are the things that literally go on you and go in you like really freaking quick. What's going on? Andrea here, your personal wellness connector, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm so excited to interview one of my one of my friends, somebody that I met years ago that I respect so much. Um, he's an amazing human who actually just moved and bought a big farm. So we'll talk about that. Um, and he's also the founder of My Green Fills, which, if you follow me, you know, is one of the top companies that I love, respect, and pretty much use every single product that they get to offer. So I'm so amazed and just so incredibly happy to talk to Steven today. What's going on? How are you? How is your new house? I'm doing awesome. The farm is great. We just bought a farm in Missouri um, and it is wonderful. It's a lot of work, um, but we needed a new adventure because I'm bored out of my mind. So we bought a farm and uh, building a full, you know, kind of 360 permaculture farm from you know, raising sustainable animals um, and crop rotation to growing great food. So yeah, next, next, uh, next adventure. Well, I love that you said, I'm so bored because you don't have enough going on with your businesses. <laughs> uh, three companies, over 150 employees, hundreds of thousands of members all over the world. Um, not clear. I don't have enough. So well, first of all, I know a big part of your team and you have an incredible team, right? And we know that it starts with our team. So you are definitely no blessed doubt. on that factor. So no let's question. talk about, you could talk, we could talk about anything here, but I really wanted to focus on everyday chemicals that we find in our homes, cleaning products in general, because let's be honest, every single one of us cleans our home, I hope, right? And if you're not cleaning it, somebody else is cleaning it for you with the chemicals that they're cleaning it with, if that makes sense. And I am a clean freak, not my studio right now. It actually is a big mess because I just bought a house too. But mm -hmm. I used to clean you and I had this conversation. I didn't know any better, right? Most of us don't know any better. So I used to go and I used to use the products that I thought were the best for my home that gave me good results and that were on sale in Target or Costco. Mm -hmm. And I used to bleach everything. And a lot of my clothes are bleached too because of using bleach. And I had no idea how this was disrupting my body, my hormones, my health. And I don't have a family yet, but we're going to have a family. Most of you ladies watching have a family. Your kids are breathing in these toxins. Your animals are breathing in these toxins. And this is just such a huge issue that we are not addressing enough. And you're the expert because one of your companies is actually you know, laundry detergents and, and everyday cleaners around your home. Yep. Tell me why this is such a huge problem and why we should be talking about it. Andrew, we're living in an interesting day and age. Uh, we're uh, today more than a month ago, a month ago, more than a year ago, and a year ago, way more than 50 years ago, we are living in the largest human chemical experiment ever. Um, we are we as humans are being bombarded um, with chemical intervention 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and there's no escaping it. Um, and you take into account all of the modern medical interventions that are happening in humans' lives today. And we, we as you know, a sophisticated society have unequivocally no idea what all of these chemicals, whether it's pharmaceutical intervention, cleaning chemical intervention, skincare, clothing, et cetera, et cetera, what this is doing to us as, as humans. And um, years ago, I, I set on a quest, you know, my, my, um, my, my son, I have five kids. And, but when my firstborn son was a, a tiny infant, he was three weeks old and I was in charge of one of his first baths and I was getting him undressed and getting, you know, we had like this green thing that set in, inside the sink in, in, in the kitchen and I getting him ready. And, and it looked when I got his onesie off, it looked like he was scourged with hot water. 
and I freaked out. I was like, oh my gosh. Like, and I called my wife over who's actually a nurse who, who specialized in sick babies. Um, and she freaked out. I freaked out. We went to the pediatrician, to a derma, to a specialist dermatologist to on our way to a uh, pharmacy to get steroids and all these different pharmaceutical things and call a friend of the family. And she asked me a question that changed my life. It says, what are you using for laundry detergent? Mm-hmm. So I'm using the big bright bottle, right? The big bottle that grandma's always used and the fabric softener that grandma always used. Oh no, you, you can't use those. You got to use something that's because kids can, babies can have an allergic reaction to laundry soap. And I, how's that possible? And so I was so obtuse and I said, well, I'll try anything before we give him met, you know, pharmaceuticals. And, you know, so we stripped his clothes and, you know, rinsed everything with this, you know, kind of like homemade non-toxic concoction. And 24 hours later, he was fine with no pharmacy, no pharmaceutical interventions. I said, well, if, if laundry detergent can make my kids sick, what else is out there? Right. So I became a full blown, like eco conspiracy theorist you know, like researching what's in the back of labels and how things are made. And, you know, that led from the laundry room to under the kitchen sink, from the kitchen sink to the garage, the garage to the cupboard, the cupboard to the refrigerator. And then I'm finally like, everything has to change. And, you know, a a, a report was done years ago and, and, and has been confirmed many times that, you know, even at, I think it was Mayo Clinic, that the average child, infant, is born with over 300 household chemicals in its umbilical cord blood, cord blood. That's frightening, right? So, you know, to to moms out there that even those that are trying to do their best to live a safe eco life, literally you, you are, whether it's through your skin, through your food, right? Through the air, through pharmaceuticals, blah, blah, like we're literally passing hundreds of household everyday chemicals in in vitro into our children. And they're born with these, these chemicals already in their bloodstream. It's frightening. So yeah, we decided something about it. And, you know, we've been pioneering green eco chemistry now for just under a decade um, and, you know, reinvented a laundry room and then went to surface cleaners, but something has to change. Um, and it, it has to change at the individual level. It's not going to change at the store level. It's not going to change at the governmental level. There's just too much, there's just too much money to be made. Um, but what, you know, individuals have to take responsibility for their lives and they got to take responsibility for one knowledge of what goes in them two, what goes on them and three, what goes around them. And, um, so that's, that's how the story started for me and why, you know, kind of our quest, our, our, you know, our crusade is so important because people need to know like what, what's in their homes and what's on them. Cause it's, it's pretty crazy. Yep. And first of all, I got teary eyed and I got goosebumps listening to your story because it, it really hits home for me because I have friends, I have family, I don't have children yet. And I, but I will soon. And after learning just everything you're talking about, it's, I almost like beat myself up for consuming all those chemicals and putting all that chemical filled skincare on my skin, right. And absorbing it. And so this is just so important what you were saying, because it's just sad what we are consuming right now. And like you said, well, we don't know what we don't know. I didn't know until I learned about it and you, but what you brought up is so crucial because we are responsible for our health. And like you said, these chemical filled cleaners, laundry detergents, skincare products, water and everything else, it's not going away. If anything, it's getting worse. I do like that more people like us are coming out and talking about it. I think it's 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 talked about a little bit more. Um, and we have such incredible people in our space and in our industry. But what you said, we might be the amount of friends that I have putting on toxic skincare products and makeup every day while they're pregnant. And then having babies that might have, might be on the spectrum or might have all these allergies and God, cancers, you know, I'm involved with a foundation where it's, you know, where we help kids with cancer and put them through these fun summer camps. And it's so sad and so much of it can be prevented. So give us your experience. You came up with these amazing products and Ladies, make sure you are checking out the product reviews that I that I did with Steven on his specific products. They're absolutely incredible. 
But let's talk about, for example, laundry detergent. What are some mm-hmm. chemicals or even cleaners? It doesn't really matter. What are some chemicals that you have seen in everyday products that we should be yep. concerned about? I think we should talk laundry. Um, yep. And uh, this, it's where we started. And we started there for a reason. Um, you know, I believe that, that laundry chemicals are the single most toxic chemicals in a house. Because how, how's that possible, right? Because you could look at like oven cleaner or degreasers and things like that. And like they have all these warnings, like if you breathe it in, if you spray it on your skin, like go see a physician. Like they're, it's like it, it does everything but blink arrows for warnings. And it's true because like the, the, the esters, the ethers, the, the solvents inside of you know, like these aerosol type, you know, uh, oven cleaners are wicked. Um, so how can laundry chemicals be more toxic than that? And just, just think about for a second, your local supermarket, um, you go and you, you know, you're over in the paper, you you got like paper towels over here and then, you know, you get in the cleaning area and you have an entire aisle full of laundry detergents. The other side of the aisle is full of all the other laundry chemicals, whether it's fabric softeners or stain treatments and da, 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 da. Then you go over one more aisle and it's like everything else, whether it's dish soap and hand soap and dish detergent, auto dishwasher, blah, you know, you know, uh, furniture polishes, everything else is in one aisle. And then laundry is in one because it's the single largest consumable in the category. So people use more laundry products than anything else. Well, it makes sense, right? You make dirty clothes every single day. So you're constantly using laundry chemicals. But here's the thing. There's a really good chance you're wearing them right now. So look, there's, if you're watching this video right now, if you look down at what you're wearing, and hopefully you're wearing something, um, if not, it would be kind of weird, is... Um, you're, you're, there's a real, there's an above average chance you are literally wearing your laundry chemicals right now. As, as I'm talking to you, when you, when you're putting your head on the pillow, maybe you're watching this and you got your head on the pillow and you get your laptop on your lap or your phone, your head is touching laundry chemicals right now. Right. Um, or whether you're listening to this podcast in the shower and you're getting out and you're taking a towel and you're drying yourself, you're, you're rehydrating residual laundry chemicals and putting them into your body. So it's the reason why we started in laundry because it's such, it's so crazy that um, these things. And, and so a couple things to know, if, if, if laundry chemicals are blue, if they're green, there's a reason why, right? Um, and the reason why they're goopy and they're thick and they're kind of all slimy is for a reason. So the reason why they're blue or green is because they're chemically engineered to leave a blue or a, a green haze on your fabrics so that under artificial light, your clothing appears brighter than it really is. It's optical illusion. They're called UV brighteners. And they're blue because, again, they, they, they pick up a blue spectrum that makes our eyes believe that your clothes are brighter. The reason why they're thick and they're goopy is because they're designed to leave this goopy, thick film on your clothes, especially fabric softeners. Lots of times to carry UV brighteners, but also to carry fragrances. And here's another interesting factoid is a fragrance can be comprised of anywhere between one and hundreds of chemical compounds. And by law, myself included, our, our company is not required to tell you what's in it. Okay. And you know what, Stephen, I need to cut you off for one second, because when I learned what you just said about fragrances, Mm -hmm. and I was the girl who had Febreze plugins or, you know, the the wall plugins and all of the different, um, what do you call them, the dryer sheets for the laundry, everything had to smell amazing. And when I learned what you just said, I mean, my face must have been like, oh my gosh. And, and. (laughs) And really, the, the fragrance industry is um, a pretty lascivious um, industry. So there's a, there's a, there's a loophole in trade USPTO, the US Patent and Trademark Office. There's a little loophole. The, the, the industry is called the fragrance loophole, where if you have a, a product that's under 1% of the total concentration of the, of the finished good, for the most part, there are some limited exceptions, but for the most part, you do not have to list what those ingredients are on a label. 
And um, you can have, you know, something that smells like sewage, but under parts per million smells like lilacs. And well, that's now lilac fragrance and perfuming. And so lots of companies, you know, just, you know, again, they could, they can blend virtually any chemical that they want, as long as it's one per, under 1% total concentration, they can just list on the back fragrance, parfum, and legally, they don't have to tell you what's in it. Um, and the unfortunate part is lots of these things may, may individually be recognized as a safe chemical based on some laboratory test on a rat. Or a, or a chimpanzee, but we don't know what it does to the human genome. And especially when you start combining all these different chemicals to, you know, remember like high school, you know, science class, you, you mixed vinegar with baking soda and you made your, your volcano experiment. So vinegar itself is fine. Baking soda itself is fine. You put them two together, there's a reaction, but we don't know what these reactions are in the human body. When we start adding all of these, you know, perfumes and dyes and fillers and buffers and chemical compounds, it's pretty crazy. So again, we took the, the stance of, hey, we're just going to list all of our ingredients um, and we're going to stay as, 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 and continually push the envelope of, of green and eco innovation um, and, you know, put all of our labels, put our formula around the label. If somebody wants to steal it, please like steal my formula, please use it. Like it's good stuff. It works and, yep. you know, it's safe. So um so that's why laundry we've started there to, to kind of circle back. And so if stuff is blue, if it's goopy, um, if, it does, if, they, if the ingredients are not in the back, if they just say, you know, blend of surfactants, which are the bubble makers, right? They, they're, that's what makes the suds. If they're not disclosing what those ingredients are, well, then if they're not willing to be transparent, don't trust them with your money. Um, and um, there are some really great companies out there. And uh but that's to me, if you know, people on a tight budget, if it's like, hey, I don't know where to start. It's so overwhelming. I'm, I'm, I just listened to Andrea. I'm just starting this, my journey. Where do I begin? It's so overwhelming. Start with laundry um, because that's the one you use the most and you're constantly wearing these chemicals all day long. Um, and, um, and then as you can, just piece by piece, you know, you run out of, you know, your special window cleaner. Well, replace it with something that's safer, vinegar or, you know, a non-toxic alternative from a great company um, and just slowly one by one, just start replacing the things that you use every day with safer things and, and you'll be better off for it. Yep. And that's exactly what I say. It's always, you know, you don't have, if you want to do the switch all at once, like, like I did, because I'm crazy, then why the heck not? Right. That's just going to be less chemicals right away. But I love that you said the laundry first, because the story that you said, they really are everywhere. It's, it's, you're in your clothes, you're in your towel. And then the next one for me would be like the everyday cleaner, right? Because you could clean anything with it more or less. Yeah. Right. And it's just such a staple where every single one of us, we finish cooking, we, we spray the countertop, we wipe it down. Something's on the floor. We spray the floor, we wipe it down. Right. So what are the chemicals? Um, first of all, Ooh, let's touch on all natural because that's just my favorite. <laughs> Not only on animal products, on cleaning products, all natural. Tell me why you and I don't love the all natural feed. Well, because it's just marketing, <laughs> right? It's just a, it's just a marketing ploy. Um, you know, again, you make you say, hey, it's like a you know all natural chicken. Well, it was a chicken, um, but you know what has been genetically modified in that chicken? The hormones, the antibiotics, the food, the Blah, 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 that's been done to that bird. It's kind of a science experiment bird. It's like a Franken chicken, but it's, but it is an all natural chicken. It's just what went into that chicken is far from natural um, and, and naturally occurring. So yeah, in the, in the, in the cleaning space, there's no really no such thing as all natural. I mean, even our products, although they're even, they're plant-based and, you know, we go through great lengths to formulate things that are you know, safe and plant-based and as non-toxic as we could possibly make them. They're not, these, these are, they're chemicals, right? Even a mined salt from the earth, sodium carbonate, it's, it's a processed salt. I mean, it's, it's, it's a chemical. So that's, it's a complete misnomer. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's just marketing ploy. Marketing lies. I talk about this a lot. I love it. So give us some, um, you know, for the average woman that's in the supermarket, right? Or not even supermarket, but Target anywhere else. 
when you're looking at a label and you're looking at an ingredient for cleaning products, laundry detergents, um, you talked about like the dyes, the blue, what happens. What are some ingredients that we should really be paying attention to and staying away from? It's interesting. Um, the thing is in most of the laundry aisle, they don't list the ingredients. You don't really have to. So there's really no way to say, hey, look away from these ingredients because a lot of companies don't. But I'll give you one example. Like one of the most um, widely used chemicals in the cleaning industry is called sodium lauryl sulfate, SLS, which gets a lot of hype, right? SLS is this nasty thing. It's actually not that nasty. I mean, it is. It's very irritating to the skin. It's a synthesized coconut oil cleaner, right? Mm -hmm. So it's put in toothpaste, it's put in, in vaccines, it's put in laundry detergent, it's put, it's put in so much, it's put in cake mixes. I mean, literally like, like people, they, companies formulate and put sodium lauryl sulfate, these sulfates, these detergents in, in over the counter cake mixes. It's frightening, right? Um, so with that said, um, we, we, um, there, there's, and since SLS got all this bad rap, right, for, for being this harsh chemical, um, then the, the alternative, which lots of companies like EWG and others, you know, recognizes in that same category is, is SLES or sodium laureth sulfate, right? So sodium laurel sulfate, sodium laureth sulfate, same thing, right? No. So, they basically take in the manufacturing of SLES or sodium laureth sulfate. I'll, give it, I'll nerd out for a second. There's a process called the ethoxylation process where they take the SLS and then it's ethoxylated, which means in, in that process, it gets extremely, it gets extremely um, uh, efficacious. It does a great job of cleaning, reducing surface area, great foaming, flash, all this nerdy chemical cleaner jargon. But in that ethoxylation process, there's a byproduct that get, gets kicked off in that process called 1,4-dioxane, which is a documented carcinogen, right? So this, this is a documented, well-documented carcinogen that's not listed on a label as an ingredient because it's not an ingredient. It's the byproduct of the ingredient and it's in there. So, and there's so many cleaning products that use SLS, S-E-L-E-S. I can literally, you could, I could buy this stuff by the tanker. Like literally like, like, a, like a, you see, like you see, like, you know, like the milk a tractor trailer going down the road or the, you know, the oil, you know, the gas, I can literally have a 50,000 gallon tanker backed up to our warehouse and pumped into a vat. It's so widely produced and it's really cheap. So those are, those are things that you, you, should, you should take a look at. Those are really, and they do list them in toothpaste and the things that are, you know, skincare, oral care, there's lots of different laws, but I would recommend um, staying away from those. Really, you got to look at, at, at color and you got to look at smell because in the laundry aisle, cleaning aisle, that's, that's what you're really subjugated to because it, you'll just say blend of ionic or non-ionic surfactants, fragrance proprietary ingredients. There's no label, there's no ingredients to look out for, right? Um, Cause they're not really listed. So things that have color, things that have smell, things that are slimy and goopy, stay away, right? Because they're going to, they're going to leave a film and they're going to be on you. The next piece, and I know you say everyday cleaner, which again, we use, oh my gosh, I don't even, we probably go through two, two refills a week in our house, yep. five kids, messes everywhere all the time. Um, but another category that is very much overlooked is dishwasher and dish soap. Um, and, and the same way that chemicals are residual chemicals left on clothing in your automatic dishwasher, you throw one of these little tablets or pods and jelly things in there. And well, the same way that those chemicals are left behind on your pillow for you to sleep on, same way these chemicals are left behind on your glasses and your plates. Oh, I got that squeaky clean. Well, those chemicals, are that sheen of chemicals, although crystal clean and squeaky, when you add your nice hot cup of organic, fair trade, blah, 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 coffee, it's acidic and it's hot. You literally are rehydrating that chemical film on your mug and drinking it, right? And, you know, like your, your clothes dryer, oh, it's, my clothes smell so fresh. Yeah, good luck. 
but a lot of that exhaust goes outside the house, right? So you, you, you know, you're walking down the street and you could smell what your neighbor is, is cleaning their clothes with. You know, a laundry machine, a dishwasher does not exhaust out of the house. It exhausts through the front inside your kitchen. So you're literally breathing these chemicals in and they're hot and they're moist and they go straight. I mean, and th- the, the, the fastest place to pass the blood brain barrier is through the nose. Makes sense, right? Mm-hmm. And through the, so like you're breathing these chemicals in, you're drinking these chemicals, you're eating these chemicals on your food. So you like laundry and your dishwasher is, is, are two really important places for you to start right? Because those are the things that literally go on you and go in you like really freaking quick. Wow. Um, and then you have the people still using, and if you're doing this, stop using plastic storage containers and throwing those in the dishwasher and then all the PBs and the plastics, and then you re- put your food in it and then you reheat it in the plastic, in the microwave. And then it's just like the perfect storm of stop. Let's, let's stop this madness. We have so many great, uh, great alternatives now. So I know we're short on time. I mean, it's just amazing how quick these interviews go when you're talking to somebody like you, but is there anything else that you want to leave us off with? Um, I think you just gave us such great insight and such easy implementation of where to start. The biggest thing that I would leave, leave you guys with is don't be overwhelmed and just do one thing at a time. And, you know, you know, we, we just came through a very crazy election season here in the United States, America, and everyone talks about your vote, right? And yeah, that vote was kind of important, but um, what's really important is the vote with your dollar every single day. And um, there, you know, companies want to sell you. I don't believe many chemi- com- companies are inherently trying to kill you. If they do, they'll have their day before God. Um, but so I'd like to believe that most companies aren't trying to kill you, um, but they are trying to sell you, right? They, they like making money off of you. And uh, I use this example often, and that's organic spinach. Because, you know, a decade ago, if you went to your health food store and got some organic spinach from, you know, the local farmer, granola crunch and hippie, you know, it was like four or five, 10 times more expensive than the chemical GMO ridden distant cousin um, at the supermarket. But now you're at the supermarket and organic spinach is pretty much the same price as the regular stuff. And why is that? It's not because a bunch of farmers became philanthropists. It's because for, lots of people said, this is what we want. And they voted with their money. And then what happened was agriculture had to figure a way to scale organic spinach as a category, because if they didn't, they were going to lose market share. So if you look at your dollar and your, your, your debit card as a vote, well, vote with the companies and the products that are actually helping people are doing good things. Because what's going to happen is those companies are going to raise up and become bigger companies that can help more people. Or these big companies say, either we have to change the way that we're doing business, because if we don't, one of these other companies are going to take over or we're going to go out of business. So if you, if you look at every single time that you go shopping, whether it's online or offline as a vote, support the people and the companies and the, and the products that you believe are good for you. And what will happen is those, there will be economies of scale and things will change. Um, and just do it one step at a time and it's going to be all good. That's my last thing. <laughs> oh, so beautifully said. Uh, love having you on. Ladies, make sure you are subscribing for more amazing videos like this with experts and fantastic human beings like Steven. So thank you for blessing us with your knowledge and enjoy that farm of yours. I certainly will. Thanks for for the time. Bless you.